peak style, especially how, what, how do you um, describe like what that is? How do you explain what that is? How is it different than just uh, than other types of claw hammer playing? Well, it's not, it, it's not, um, it's not your, your standard sort of frailing where uh, I, I kind of think of frailing and I teach this in my classes. I could be totally wrong, but this is my take on it. I, I tend to think of frailing claw hammer banjo as being offbeat uh, sort of centric where you would go and uh, you know where you you're starting on the end of one or the ditty bum ditty bum ditty bum uh -huh. uh, in the round peak style we tend to sort of think or I do I tend to think of it as bum ditty bum ditty where the, the, the main emphasis is on the melody note on the beat, but you have a lot of pickups. You have a lot of lead-ins um, musically that, you know, you might, you might, uh, you might have a and a one lead-in, but then, then the melody is, is back on the beat, uh, always on the bum. Um, so, it's not it's not your it's not sort of a straight frailing style in that that the emphasis is on the beat rather than the offbeat it's and it uh we tend to do uh, a lot of drop thumb i hear a lot of drop thumb uh patterns in it to get to get those those eighth notes that that you know sort of make up a melodic line but it's not overly melodic it's it's largely i always describe it as hitting the high spots that the fiddle player plays you don't want to, I, we don't want to play every note that the fiddle player plays, but we want to get the high spots of the melody while right. providing a nice rhythm. You know, you, you want to provide the, the fiddle player something, a good backing to play to, a good rhythmic backing, but you also, you know, it, it, you're, you're keeping up with, with the, the melody at the same time. You know, so, so it, it, uh, it's about the drive. There's a, there's a it a lot of times a lot of tunes when you start into the a part of a tune you play slightly on the front edge of the beat sometimes but then you immediately fall right back onto the beat you mm -hmm. know so you're so you're playing just milliseconds ahead of the beat and i don't know i i, I kind of think that 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 is because the music was meant for dancing Mm -hmm. And before there was the ability, to, there were sound systems and the ability to adjust delay in a hall. You, you, you would, you know, you'd start on, you, you'd get the music to the dancer uh, a millisecond before that beat was supposed to happen. So then everybody mm -hmm. got synced, you gotcha. know, so, yeah. so there's that little drive, that little jump in the, jump in the first beat, you know, but that, that, that drive happens all through the music. So you've got that push in, it's, it's pushing and still on the beat at the same time, you know? Right. And are you doing a number of pull-offs without striking it with your right hand too? Yeah. 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 I get, I get, I personally get a lot of notes, um, by doing, by doing pull-offs and, and what I call a double note. You know, um, um, rhythmic fill like that terrible example of what I was trying to say. I chose the wrong tune. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, there are lots of, there are lots of pull-offs that, 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 uh, work in conjunction with the drop thumbs. So you can right. get, you can get yet another note in a line without having it sound like a melodic right hand line where you're playing an individual note with every finger every time. And, and so you you might have a drop thumb followed by a pull off or a 
a strike pull off and then replace so you get a you know yeah and it, it allows you to play off the beat notes off the beat a little bit more too so it's not that, so downbeat oriented that is correct that's right yeah. that's right yeah 